Today, I want to talk about equity compensation and how it can affect investor returns. Now, it's usually justified as a way of aligning management's incentives with shareholders to ensure a focus on value creation. The problem is that the accounting for equity compensation is now so flawed that we think this viewpoint is delusional. Ultimately, very few people seem to understand the real cost of these programmes and the impact it has on shareholder risk. We think that far too often these programmes simply enrich management and leave minorities to carry the can. Now, before we go on, I must remind you that under Hong Kong SFC regulation, we can't make recommendations and none of what follows should be taken as investment advice. However, if you are thinking about investing in a company that uses one of these schemes, we think you should think about the following. First, let's think about the alignment of incentives. Many investors invest in companies because they want a dividend stream. The problem with this is that equity compensation schemes, and particularly those with share options, reward short-term share price appreciation. They virtually never adjust for dividends. What this means is that management is incentivized to pursue share buybacks from which they benefit rather than dividends for which they don't. We would also question whether it truly aligns management with growth investors because far too often management borrows money to buy back stocks. And in the worst case scenario, we see situations where management talks about growth but instantly cashes in their awards as soon as they actually vest and then borrows money to fund the buybacks to offset the dilution. The next misnomer is that this is a cashless, cost-free transaction. Now, it's simply not true. First, obviously, when you buy back the stock, there is cash involved. Secondly, issuing stock at low prices and buying it back at high prices creates losses. However, these losses go through the balance sheet rather than the P&L like normal transactions. And when we look at individual cases, we see that the cash rewards are often many, many multiples of the actual original accounting expense. In a recent study, using data from companies around the world, we estimated that the real cost of equity compensation was often two to three times the expense cost. And when you account for this, in a lot of growth companies, we saw that real EBITDA was but a tiny fraction of management's non-GAAP EBITDA. Worse, as some slow growth blue chips, management's been able to pocket billions of dollars in extra cash rewards, even as profits fell. Now, these are just some of the things we discovered in our research. If you'd like to know more, please visit our website or send us an email. If you'd like to keep up to date with our work, please subscribe to the channel. Thank you very much for your time.